Good morning. Thanks to the marvels of modern technology, I can celebrate this Passion Week with you from the home of Simon the leper here in Bethany, just outside Jerusalem, where Jesus was given an unexpected and very extravagant gift. Now, throughout history, many extravagant gifts have been given. Mike Tyson's $2 million solid gold bathtub gift to his wife certainly fits in that category. Yachts, large diamonds, and waterfalls have also been given by movie stars to their spouses, which to me seems rather extravagant. Now, all these gifts were given by people with huge monetary resources, but the gift given to Jesus during Passion Week is in a different category altogether. Let's consider the account of this gift as recorded in Matthew 26, verses 1 through 10. When Jesus had finished all these words, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man is to be handed over for crucifixion. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people were gathered together in the court of the high priest named Caiaphas. And they plotted together to seize Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they were saying, not during the festival, otherwise a riot might occur among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster vial of very costly perfume. And she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. But the disciples were indignant when they saw this and said, why this waste? For this perfume might have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you bother the woman? For she has done a good deed to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. For when she poured the perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken of in memory of her. Notice in verse 1, Matthew gives us a context. Jesus clearly tells them that he's going to be crucified during the upcoming Passover. In fact, this is the third time Jesus has told them. In chapter 16, verse 21, he tells them he's going to be killed and rise the third day. And again, in Matthew 20 and verse 18, he repeats that prediction. In the first instance, Peter rebukes Jesus for saying such a thing. And in the second instance, several disciples respond by asking if they can sit on his right hand in the kingdom. In this instance, Jesus is at the home of Simon the leper. John informs us in chapter 12 of his gospel that it is Mary, the sister of Martha, who comes and pours the oil on him and fills the house with the fragrance of the pure nard that comes from a plant in India. This draws the attention of the disciples who are outraged by this display of devotion. Mark explains that the oil was worth a year's wages, which explains the focus of the disciples. Remember, they were not a wealthy group and often had to depend on hospitality of others. So a year's wages would have enabled them to do a lot of outreach. But as Jesus points out to them, they will all, there will always be plenty of opportunities to do so. But Mary, who took every opportunity to sit at Jesus' feet, had taken this unique opportunity to minister to him as he would face death by crucifixion in just a few days. The disciples missed out because they were too occupied with their needs and the ministry needs in order to take time for Jesus. So was this an extravagant gift? Yes, but not wasted, as it was a sacrificial gift of devotion to Jesus. During this Passion Week, there will be many things to distract you, many opportunities to reach out to others. But look for and take the opportunity to make your own extravagant gift and sacrifice to Jesus. Perhaps it could begin with Romans 12.1, where Paul urges us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice to Christ. 
pouring out your life to him will fill heaven with a fragrance, much like Mary's did here in Matthew 26. The world will consider it a waste, but God will be well pleased with your sacrifice.